Mm -hmm. Like my mind is well able to get these thoughts out that I be having, I'm able to get them out. So the music is still coming out fantastic, like sounding more incredible than ever, sounding, you know. Yeah. Take the club, move the crowd, mosh pits, all type of different vibes. Like, you know, I still got penny dropping music too as well. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta have it. So it's funny, man, people been saying that 2021 is going to be the best year for music because all of y'all got to sit still and really work on, you know, your projects. Do you think that's true? Man, I ain't gonna lie. I think that's definitely true for me, for sure. Like, cause my album, like, it's still taking me a long time to finish my album. I can't even speak for no other artists, but I know like my album, I actually got to put it together and just go like find out my old Pro Tour sessions. You know what I'm saying? And just, organize all my songs and figure out what I wanted to do next and what I wanted to do with yeah. project. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you are not in the studio, what are some of your favorite things to do while we're all locked in the quarantine? When I'm not in the studio, I like to play basketball. Yeah. I now I've seen you hooping and I have some questions. Okay. Yeah, because I feel like when you started, when the when the video started, you know, rappers hooping, it was almost like battling, like who who's the better hooper, and it felt like you were actually really getting buckets. How often do you play? I feel like at least three times a week. Okay, I uh, got fit. You know what I'm saying? I can't come out of quarantine looking like Barney. You feel me? <laughs> That's <the> <laughs> Uh, top five rappers that also hoop, according to Sway Lee. Uh, do they have to be rappers? They have to be rappers. You can't just pick hoopers. We just pick LeBron and KD and stuff. It has to be people that we know for rapping, and then when you see them, they actually are nice on the court. I ain't really played with everybody, but as far as what I've seen... Through media sources and media outlets and stuff. Uh -huh. Quavo, J. Cole, uh -huh. Justin Bieber. Uh -huh. Hey, like Jack Harlow, good. Jack Harlow, good too. Jack Harlow. Okay. I, I feel like he could beat a lot of rappers. Yeah. Jack Harlow and Lil Dirt. All right. Um. The thing that you, one of the things that you do so well that I really feel like is like part of the DNA of your music is you figure out how to really like have a good time. You know what I mean? From from the very beginning of your career, you know, you've obviously like you performed at GQ parties. Like, you know, you figure out a way to have a good time. And in this year, it feels like, you know, people have gone through so much. Had, what have you done? to kind of like, like lift your spirits? Like, how are you having fun in 2020? Like, what did you do this year? Uh, it was, yeah, it was a, like a lot of limitations on the year, I ain't gonna lie, like, it was a whole lot of limitations, but, you know, we still found ways to just be happy. Like, I bought a dog, a little dog, um, playing basketball, you know, smoking. Yeah. It's no marijuana. <laughs> Um, you know what I'm saying? Just hanging out with the gang, getting my house organized. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I ride my bike. Electric where, bike. Do you ride your bike through Atlanta? No, I ride electric bikes up in LA. Oh, nice. Riding around the city. Nice. Um, what is the best way that you've kind of stayed grounded through the years? You know? Uh, I like, I'm like a chill person. Like I get lit when it's time to get lit. Of course, you know what I'm saying. Y'all see me in my peak litness. Yeah. Moments, but you know what I'm saying. I really be chilling. So I came from like a real life, like being broke. Like I used to have no money. So goddamn, it's easy for me to stay humble, like and just stay grounded. Now I have money. I just realized like all this shit could be gone in a day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, you feel me? Yeah. 
So it's just like, I just pay attention to what's going on around me. So I'll be ready for, and I can prepare myself for what's coming next. And I just always make sure I'm ahead of the curve. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, lots. Yeah, um, a lot of different ways, like a lot of, a lot of reminders. Yeah. Uh, don't never lose your head. Don't ever lose who you are in this shit. Don't ever yeah. walk beside yourself. Um, when we posted that you were gonna come on, uh, come on the show, I had a bunch of young, whether it's like my my little cousin Royce, or you know, uh, kids I coach, whatever, that are like that want to get into music. They really look up to you. That's dope. You know? So like, what what advice do you have for like those up and coming kids? Because I think so much, so many of them are looking at what you do and how you how you maneuver through everything. Um, my advice to them would just be be prepared for the most ugliest type of people in the world, most negative type of people in the world. Just know they're out there. You know, what I'm saying they're gonna try to deter you and steer you away from your dream, but. You got to stay focused. You got to just, you know, believe in what you started. In. Like, believe in the same thing, that ideas, and same dream that you had when you started. Don't let nobody, like, discourage you. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a lot of hate. And it's, it's going to be more love than hate. But it's going to be hate out there. You know what I'm saying? So just be prepared for that. Don't let it, don't let it catch you off guard. You know what I'm saying? Just do you. You know what I'm saying? It's possible to do whatever. Like, like Lil Wayne said, the sky is the motherfucking limit. Like, you can literally go to the moon and back. Like, this shit crazy. Like, yeah. and I tell them if they looking up to me, I tell them new music on the way, man. Yeah. Yeah. New on the way. Yeah. Um, I feel like you've met so many celebrities, icons of yours. You know, um, what's one celebrity, one person that you met that you're like, yo, this is like a real, uh, like a moment I'll never forget. Like, this is a big one for me. Mm, when I met Kanye. What, where were you and when was this? Well, actually, I met Kanye a lot of times, but I, when I first met him, I met him at the Super Bowl. It was like some type of Super Bowl party like four years ago. But recently, you know what I'm saying, I just like, just like being around like, and just being like at the warehouse and stuff, it was just like, it was dope, like to see how organized he is and just see how huge he thinks. Like on, yeah. he thinks on such a large scale, you know what I'm saying? So just seeing that was dope for me. Like that was one of my, yeah. Did he play you any of the new music? Like, I don't want to spill too many beans. <laughs> But that man up to something right there. Yeah, yeah, that's what people that's what people have been saying. Um, when you look at your career, you know what what would you consider the highest moment up until this point? Because you you got you know you've been doing it for a minute. What would you consider the highest moment, and what would you consider the lowest moment? Yeah, man, my career been so crazy. It's like. I literally blew up like five times. Like I became famous five times. Like I say, the highest moment for me was um, when Black Beatles went number one. Like that was crazy because that was me and my brother, and we had a number one song in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's like the whole world freezing, doing the mannequin challenge. Like that shit. That was crazy. Like the whole world froze. Like doing this whole challenge to one of my songs, like, it was just nuts. And it won, like, you know what I'm saying? It's a win-win situation. Like, this motherfucker went number one out of all the songs in the world. Like, uh, you know, that was like time traveling, like, time control. Hmm. And what would you say is the lowest moment? The lowest moment? i say the lowest moment was when people, on my third album, when it was just, for whatever reason, it's so confusing to people hmm. to in a triple-sided album. Like, me and my group, Bray Shimmer, 
we dropped a three day, like a triple sided album. One side was Ray Shrimmer, which is the group. One side was Slim Jimmy, and one side was Sway Lee. And you know, it was just like, it was, it was this whole topic where like, people were saying it's so confusing, like they don't understand it. Like I literally went on Twitter and made a diagram, like okay, like this, this is what it means. Like <laughs> I made a, a fucking Venn diagram. I'm like, Sway Lee, my <laughs> Slim Jimmy, his side, and in the middle, you know, when the circles cross, Ray <laughs> is where, of course, Ray Shrimmer. So it's like, that was, I wouldn't even say that was a low point though. Maybe, this is the lowest point actually. This year? Yeah. Why? It's just Corona, like I can't, you can't go outside, I'm not performing, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not even reaching out of my fans, like I haven't dropped no music. It's, yeah. just, it's just crazy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit's at a standstill. Yeah. But like, like, my shit would be, I wouldn't be sitting down for two days, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, um, when you, when you look at, you know, the way you've been able to, like, navigate, there are people that had number one songs, we won't say no names, but, like, they're, they're not still... Uh, like culturally relevant, you know, and you mm -hmm. figured out a way to like stay, which I think is the hardest thing for a musician. It's the hardest thing for artists, period. Um, wh why do you think that is? Like, what what is it? You know, what is it that you think <clears throat> makes an artist uh, have longevity? I think in the end of the day, when it's all said and done, the thing that makes an artist have longevity is the music, you know what I'm saying? Like, what what music do they make? What song, do, do I know any of their songs? And it's like, if it's a song they really know, like, that's powerful, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's a song that really, like, helped them to a point in their life, that's powerful, like, so I feel like, yeah, that's all the artists really got, like, to not fall off. How the song make people feel, like, what, like, what happened because of the song, you know what I'm saying? Like, what type of feel did the song give off? Like, I feel like my songs just like, I really, like, I don't be making no hype song. I don't make no fucking songs just for one point in time. I, I try to make songs that are gonna last forever, like, big songs. Like, I don't try to make just regular songs. Like, I don't put 10% of my music. Like, I put, 100%, I'm staying up in that bitch in the studio till 8, 9 in the morning, you know what I'm saying, doing this shit every day. So, when you play the songs, like, you can hear that in the songs. So I feel like that's why they got they got replay value, you know what I'm saying? The, song, the songs got replay value. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's always a funny thing when you look at people, uh, you know, any musician, athlete, actor, actress, whatever, you know, you start making money and then you always have that one or two purchases that you really regret, be it a stupid car or a bad chain or, you know, clothes, like a, like a clothing item that you never wear. What's like the one thing you regret the most that you purchase the moment you start getting real money? Definitely a lot of bad chains. <laughs> 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 and then what happens with them like what when you buy a bad chain and you're like yo i'm never gonna wear this again then what happens <laughs> it, like it can just get lost or like you might just give it to <laughs> or, or get stolen and you don't care you might leave it somewhere not even care like yeah. sit, and it might sit up in a safe yeah i had a lot of jewelry that had a lot of different like ending results yeah yeah. Um cars. I bought a I bought a fucking house that I shouldn't even fucking bought. Cause I don't even live in it. It's just like it's literally the same city that I live in, like two houses, so I shouldn't have bought that so early. Man. Yeah, but you're learning, right? You're not making you're not making those mistakes now. Oh no, it's the reason I was able to get the house. Cause I put smart places. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. invest in everything. Right. Please invest your money. Um, we have a million questions about your hard drive. Uh, uh, what's the latest with the situation? The latest with that situation, man, it's, we know where it's at and it's on the way back. You know what I'm saying? The hard drive, like, it's a thing, like, it was like this whole narrative, like, where I got robbed, like, I didn't get robbed, first of all, like, the the backpack was with one of my affiliates, and it just got swiped sitting in a place that it shouldn't have been sitting. Yeah. And, but it's not like nobody robbed me. It's actually ended up being a super fan that swiped the hard drive. He didn't know what he was grabbing. Yeah. In little, you know, pieces that really told him whose bag it was, like, so he figured out it was my bag. You know, he just wanted to have contact with me and just be in communication with me. You know what I'm saying? So... It's all good. We have like our resources to get it back, and it's definitely on the way back. Safe. You you seem so calm and so uh, mature and at ease about like you're like zen like you're like a monk about yeah. the whole situation. This shit like it's literally like a movie, bro. <laughs> Life is like a movie. Like everything written. I feel like everything written. So I don't really trip, like, especially not. I can I have like MP3s of the song, so. If it came down to it, I could just I would just re-record them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Or I just make new ones. You know what I'm saying. It's like it's definitely a loss. Like I sh I cried about it. You know what I'm saying. I definitely cried about it. Like if I don't get that shit back, I don't really like it's it's heartbreaking. It's it's gonna break my heart. Like, but it's not the end of the world. That's the thing about it. It's not the end of the world. Like I literally made. I was at the studio last night. I made four songs. Like in a month. How many days in a month? If I make four songs Sorry. in a month, you know what I'm saying? I can literally cook up 10 albums in four months. Like, yeah. I'm not really stressing. Like, I'm not about to blow my brains out over the hard drive type shit or the right. white shit. And I know I'm getting it back. So it's like, I'm cooling, you know what I'm saying? I'm chilling. Like, I got my yeah. resources. Who it was, like, we already know who it was. It's going to drop. It was a kind of like a delay on my album and shit. Which is cool because I don't even want to drop in 2020. No way. I need to drop in 2021 anyway. So it's all good. Like, Yeah. You you must have really good people around you that help you keep you calm uh, in moments like that. Right? I've just been in worse situations. So this situation, yeah. I grew up like having to deal with it by myself or dealing with it with my brother. So. I grew up dealing with worse shit than this, so this is just like I already know how to do. So it's like it's not even a problem to me right now. Like it's just I already figured out ways around it and solutions for it. So and I got my resources to get that back. It's just you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna ask you a couple rapid fire questions and then we're gonna wrap this up. Um favorite city to perform in. Favorite city to perform in Amsterdam. Amsterdam, why? London. Cause you they said, you said London? Yeah, London, London. Yeah. They turn why? up like they ain't ashamed to turn up. Like they really gonna come mosh pits, all type of that mosh pits dust coming in the air, like they so lit, like it's a festival called Wireless Festival. And they really Go crazy at that shit. The energy is unmatched. Like these folks came for like they came with a purpose. You feel me? Yeah. Uh I had three women that basically asked is there you go. Shout out to Cash App again for making it all possible. <laughs> Another uh <laughs> three women who asked basically the same question, which is uh what is your ideal first date? Three women asked that. It's basically the same question. Yeah, one of them was inappropriate, so I just melded it into this one. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, my my ideal first date. Shit, my ideal first date. Um, we might just go out to eat on the first date. Like, we can do something boring just so I can really peak the vibe. Like, yeah, like, but it got to be a good restaurant. 
I might let her pick, you know what I'm saying? Like she can pick the restaurant, pick pick the time if you want to too. That's cool. She can pick the time. Got down, pull up. If we ride in my whip, you know, I might hold the door for you, blah, blah, blah. I'm not gonna <laughs> open it for you though. I'm just gonna open it for you. You can close it. Like boom. Yeah. <laughs> get in. We fly somewhere, boom, close to the restaurant. Yeah, we're gonna order. I'm going to pay for the food, you know what I'm saying? Chop it up, get to know you a little bit. See what you eating, see if you vegan or whatever. You know, see if she pescatarian. Um, yeah, chop it up, get to know you. See what you play in the car. Like, what type of music you play in the car? Like, do you listen to bullshit? Um, and, yeah, that'll be first day. I'm dropping back off at home. Like, you're not coming to my house. <laughs> Um, two people wanted to know, why did you cut your dreads? I cut my dreads, man, because I was just, I knew that the universe was telling me it's time for me to change my swag to get ready for the new shit that was coming my way to get prepared for my new, a new chapter in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. everything around me was just changing up, like, and then I lost my father, so it just, it really, like. I guess it was a change in the world for me. So it was like, the dreads didn't fit me no more. And I was just like, I'm gonna grow my hair back out like to the same length that my dreads were, but it's just gonna be, it's just gonna be like natural hair, you know? And it's just gonna be like, it's just gonna be a different vibe, but it's gonna be the same essential thing, like type shit. Yeah. I used to have a fro when I came in the game too, before I really got famous. Like that was my story, I had an afro. And then I just dreaded it up, and that became Sway Lee. But when I used to run around the hood and shit, I used to wear an afro. <laughs> what, what, did you, what did you think about this year's Grammy nominees? Do you think they got it right? Think they got it wrong? Or what, what do you think? Who did they? Who did they? Uh, I'm not even going to act like I, like I can rattle that off the top of my it's like they really let me down like so many times like i don't it's like and no disrespect to them but like it's just not like they're all the way tuned into what's going on really in the culture it's just like they miss key things and they get you know it's not all the way spot on to me like yeah I, it, the grammys hurt my feelings multiple times many many years you know what yeah. I'm saying? yeah post malone had a song sunflower you know what i'm saying they didn't shake. I don't know who they gave it to, but you know, right. Sunflower received nothing. That's first. That's when I knew that was that was my final. You know, what I'm saying that was my final confirmation that these might not be the most accurate awards. You feel me? It might be something bigger than we know going on when they choose who they give it to. You know, so it might be a little more politics to it or something. But the first time when you know, number one song, biggest song in the world, Black Beatles, like. Made the world freeze. Didn't win a Grammy, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's so many instances. Unforgettable, didn't win a Grammy. No type, didn't win a Grammy. No flex zone, didn't win a Grammy. Come get her, didn't win a Grammy. Swang, didn't win a Grammy. You know what I'm saying? So many songs, didn't win a Grammy. But it's just like, it's not the end of the world with that. You know what I'm saying? So many more award shows, prestigious award shows. If we still gonna make the best music of our life. You know what I'm saying? We still gonna continue to make better music. Fuck. I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say, look, let me tell you, let me tell you. I'm still, um, I'm still gonna go to the, you know, we still gonna hit the Grammys and be classy and, you know, kill the red carpets and shut the red carpets. Yeah, carpet yeah, yeah. All that stuff. But when it comes to who they hand the awards out to, it's just like, we don't feel no ways about it. But I feel like they might have been missing a couple artists and a couple artists might not have got their flowers time and time again. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. maybe give out more Grammys. That's what it is. Maybe they need to give out 20 more Grammys. Then they, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, something. Yeah. Uh, last question for you. The new music that you're working on, when you know, what we expect in 2021, what is one word that describes what we should expect? Ferocious. Shit. Yeah. 
Well, you know, good to see you. I feel like I only see you mostly at, at parties. I'm glad that you're healthy, glad <laughs> that you're well. <laughs> Um, and I'm gonna see you in 2021. It's, it's gonna be an amazing year again. Shout out Cash App, Cash by Cash App for hooking it up. Um, yeah, man. Bye, bye. We'll see you on the next one. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year if we don't see y'all before. All right, my brother. Love, Yo, bro. Thank you, man. Peace. All the fans in the chat, man. Love y'all. Keep, keep tuning in. New music on the way, new bangers on the way, new videos on the way. See y'all in 2021. That front cover. <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon. Later, y'all. I know.